Hello, my name is Dr. Segas. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biological and Agricultural Engineering at NC State University. And my work is all about carbon, specifically this carbon gas that's in the air and atmosphere all around us, namely carbon dioxide or CO2. So unfortunately, there's a little too much CO2 in the atmosphere. Um, and we need to develop technologies to extract or capture the CO2 from the air and put it in stable products or sequester it in the ground or deep underground for, long, for a long term. The reason we need to do this is that unfortunately uh, the last two to three hundred years we've burned a bit too much fossil carbon and the concentration is a little too high. This is causing a slow change in the climate so we need to be proactive and develop technologies that can capture or extract the CO2. Right? So plants do this naturally through photosynthesis. Right? They take the CO2 out of the air to develop biomass in the spring and summer. In the fall and winter, these, the plants and the biomass, most of that carbon that's now in the biomass form is released back into the atmosphere as CO2. So there is an opportunity to utilize that biocarbon before it's released back into the atmosphere. And that's what my work is, all, is focused on. So you can really think of two main types of processes to extract the CO2 and sequester it. You have natural processes and engineered processes. So an example of a natural process is enhancing the amount of carbon in the soil through soil carbon enhancement. And there are different ways this can be done, things like no-till farming, uh, cover cropping, as well as these new advanced microbial fertilizers that are placed into the soil that actually boost the microbiota of the soil and enhance the carbon content. An example of an engineered process is something like fermentation, right? So typically engineered processes uh, involve industrial operations and reactors of some, of some sort that take the biocarbon in, convert it using innovation into some type of product, some valuable product that is stable and ultimately sequesters the carbon. So an example of an engineered product could be a bioplastic. If you design an innovative bioprocess that uh, converts the carbon into bioplastic without releasing too much CO2, you can prove through life cycle analysis that you've actually sequestered carbon from the atmosphere. So, to summarize, carbon capture, utilization, and sequestration is all about taking the CO2 from the atmosphere and putting it in some stable, sequestered, ideally valuable form. By the year 2050, we're expected to remove enough CO2 to basically account for every car that's currently running today. What that means is, think of every car on the planet, the billions of cars and all the CO2 they're emitting per year. In the year 2050, we have to be able to capture that much CO2 and sequester it. That's a lot of CO2 and that's why this challenge is so daunting and we have to get started now. So biological and agricultural engineers will be needed to develop these technologies, right? And what's really unique about bio and ag engineers they learn all of the technical, traditional engineering skills, but they also have this mindset of trying to use more natural processes and take advantage of photosynthesis, which is basically the best natural process that's evolved for billions of years to extract CO2, right? So bio and ag engineers are at this interface between traditional engineering and these emerging natural ecosystem-based technologies that I think will really help reach that goal of uh, capturing gigatons of CO2 every year by the year 2050.